frontier there. I think that not only is this impracticable, de facto, like uh, what I was so interested when I visited Shanghai was, I mean, we here in Europe border with some shitty ethical dilemmas, they are doing it like crazy there, no? in China. Like, they already have plans to control in the long term the entire population, the basic features, and so on, and everybody is doing it. You know that recently I spoke with some American investigative journalists who told me that the latest thing going on in military technology and that not only Americans, all American Chinese are already doing it like crazy, is a new level of, how should I call it, pharmaco-neuronal psychological warfare, where, uh, it, what, for example, they told me that they did this, I speak in the past, past tense, they already can do this. It's very primitive logic, basically. They discovered that when you are really afraid, full of shit, in a true panic, uh, your brains emit a certain electromagnetic radiation whatsoever. So then they draw the obvious conclusion, why don't we do it the other way around? And they discovered that it works. If you bombard me with this type of waves, I will be automatically, physiologically, thrown into a panic. And uh, again, it's primitive, but it works, and I was told that they already have, it's still clumsy, but some kind of elementary machines where a certain space, like a baseball field, something like that, every human being there, simply, you press a button, they are all in panic. I mean, that's the future, and I simply think uh, I, I mean, Chinese know how to do it now in this combination of authoritarian socialism and, and capitalism. One thing is the, the state wants to control the entire population. On the other hand, they are already building, they even showed me some plans in the suburbs of Shanghai, mega clinics for the rich Western medical tourists. The idea is that in a year or two, they told me, you will be able to go there if you are rich. They will do all the genetic research, you know, all this. They're always doing it in India. Yeah, but in what <coughs> sense is it already a mass, massive? It is? Well, in India you can get all the health care you want, cheaper, mm. nicer service and all that, than is easily... No, 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 I know, I know, I know. Maybe I focus too much on Chinese. I know. So what I'm saying is that, or you know what, really, why I really think we are approaching some kind of apocalyptic times, not in the bad sense, maybe it will be the hope of something new, which has just become aware that we are approaching some zero point. For example, I'm so interested in following this trend, where I was told that you already can do it, that you can directly link your neurons to a computer, so that then, for example, you can move objects, only by thinking. You know, you don't even need that Stephen Hawking famous one finger that he can move. No, you can, and uh, uh, they, of course, it's still done on a very primitive, at a very primitive level. But I was told, for example, they already can decode by wiring you, your neurons, this ele very elementary mental signals of up, down, left, right. So at NYU even, I think, I was told, they already have a computer game that you can play just with your mind. You don't have this joystick. I never got it by the joystick. It sounds so masturbatory. <laughs> you know that, that, like, you move, but you know what's so horrible is that you can intervene into reality by the mere power of thinking, and of course, the way they do it with technology, to make us swallow this, they always start with how this will help invalids and so on and so on. I saw a report, maybe you did it, a couple of months ago, it was reported, it was reported that, in, uh, that in London they already had this, how do you call it, for, it's politically incorrect to say, how do you say, crippled people, movement challenged or what? <laughs> okay, whatever, disabled, yeah, okay, sorry, no fun here in Denver, just that taste. Uh, that, you know, you don't even have to, that, you can simply move the wheelchair or what, uh, simply 
This technology is over a decade old where they fuse the nerves. Into uh -huh. the, uh, yeah, but the point is we should get more and more developed. Sure. And what interests me, that's the philosophical question here, is uh, how will this affect our self-identity? I claim that our self-identity is based on this distinction between that's me, that's out there reality. I think what I want Reality is out there. Our notion of freedom is based on this. Because the next thing, as the military example reminds us immediately, you know, if it goes out, it goes in. That is to say, if you can move an object with your thought, then your thoughts can also be moved by... Uh, sorry. There's a problem, though, with that. Uh, a friend yeah. of mine is a computer scientist, in Ireland, and yeah. he's working on uh, reading uh, the middle... Ah, I know, know no, you. you are the guy who... You are the rap rapist priest advocate. Yes, okay. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. No, and, but uh, apparently there, there, there's certain things that your brain does, and it doesn't function as we wa want it to. Yeah. For example, if, if I ask you, you know, what's 2 plus 2, yeah. and you say 4, there's a part of your brain that does the mathematics. And if I keep asking you the same... Uh, yeah. thing. It'll go from the party man that does the mathematics to memory, right? Yeah. So, but if I keep giving you different additions, like, yeah. you know, 2 plus 2, uh, 5 plus what, yeah. whatever, we keep going on, it should constantly fire the mathematical part of your brain. But every so often, it fires some other part of your brain. That's just unexplainable. It's, it's actually ruined my friend's postdoc. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 you know, they've all gone back to the drawing board now. Because, so it's, you know what makes this interesting? <laughs> that is it truly just some kind of, you know, like in every mechanism things misfire from time to time? Or can you read some deeper defense of whatever mechanism meaning into it? Um, I'm not sure, no, it, 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 it's just, it, it really is just the way we want the brain to work, or, or as yeah, a yeah. machine, it, it's just yeah. not doing it. It's because just, it, yeah. I, think, I, think, I don't know if there's some, some quantum element to it or something. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, uh, okay, but, uh, sorry, where were we? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, yeah, okay, intensity, all that stuff and so on. So here, I think that we should take seriously what goes on in today's brain sciences and so on. Now, I am not here, I think the trick is to avoid on the one hand, this naive tech gnosis, oh, wonderful, we will become like gods, we will, you know, just moving things with our immersed into the world, whatever. But also, we should avoid this uh, uh, nihilistic pessimism, oh, the end of humanity, the end of being human, and so on and so on. All I'm saying is that we should openly confront the problem. And that, coming back to it, Slaughter Dyke, I think all he wanted is this. And uh, Haber the Habermas and some of his groupies, how should I put it, around, uh, mounted in Germany a ferocious attack proclaiming uh, Slaughter Dyke an advocate of kind of neo Nazi genetics and so on and so on. I mean, it was slightly ridiculous, how should I put it, no? So, coming back to what I was saying, uh, uh, I don't agree with Sloterdijk, but for example, his last book, which is even a big bestseller in Germany, uh, Du musst dein Leben ändern, You must change your life. The idea, it's a nice one, is that what we misread as this post-secular rise of the religious, it's not this, it's simply, it has nothing to do with religious spirituality, that is just the new form of emerging anthropology, where the idea is almost like Judy Butler, Foucault, that through practice you have to form, reform yourself. And that's why he finds a wonderful underlying concept where he puts together people like creative thinkers, models, top sportsmen, and so on, you know. All these totally different levels where the constant is through hard work, discipline, training, you form, form yourself. And uh, then... There comes the pearl. He, he claims that, and he convinced me, that the central religious figure of the 20th century is, how is that creep called, I uh, forgot his name, who, who is the founder of, of Scientology? L. Ron, L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, Ron Hubbard, yeah. Because he says that, that, that uh, and he focuses on something which I find quite fascinating, how Ron Hubbard inverted the usual historical line, which is something was, let's say, if you are modern, secular, atheist, you are respectful. You say old sacred texts. You, your line is, once they were taken immediately, seriously, mm -hmm. today we should admire them, but not for their cognitive 
ethical value, best as beautiful monument. As